welcome back to the channel guys for episode 2 in the 8020 experiment series. This week we're going to look at how you can accurately predict your training zones for the 8020 experiment. So for that you're going to need two different numbers. The first one is your rest and heart rate which is easily established by taking your pulse each morning for one minute before you get out of bed. You can either do it just holding your wrist or you can do it with your chest strap with your GPS watch whichever way is very easy so take your rest and heart rate first thing in the morning over the course of a week and we'll take the average of that rest and heart rate the second number we're going to need is the maximum heart rate and that one's a little bit more difficult to establish so you're probably familiar with the 220 minus your age for your maximum heart rate but that's quite loose and is not very accurate. It's going to vary greatly from person to person for your genetics, for your fitness level, um, a number of factors. So this is a test that we're going to do today to accurately discover your maximum heart rate. So two things you're going to need for the maximum heart rate test are a chest strap for your watch. If you have wrist based, please don't use it because for this test they're very inaccurate and not so reliable. So use the chest strap. The other thing you're going to need is a hill. So this is a test I do with the athletes I work with and something I've done for my own training also. Um, at the end of this test, we'll, we'll see how accurate or inaccurate the 220 minus your age actually is. So the way it's going to work, you're going to have a good warm up, 10, 15 minutes with a few surges, maybe spending one minute, two minutes at a time at or around your threshold, uh, just to make sure that your lactate level is up and you begin to bring it back down. So it's not a complete shock when you start the test. So once you've done the warm up, what we're going to do is five repetitions on your hill and ideally your hill is going to be around three minutes long. Um, the first two minutes of each repetition you're going to push at around 90% of what you perceive to be your maximum effort. So you're not going to go full speed right from the beginning. Allow your heart rate to build up over those two minutes and then on the last minute you're going to push with a maximum effort. And to recover you're going to jog back down not a completely slow jog, keep your heart rate up a little and we're going to do five repetitions. You're probably going to find your maximum heart rate happens on the third or fourth repetition and you'll probably find five or ten seconds after you finish each rep is when the heart actually spikes. So not when you're running itself but when you stop and begin to recover. So, so keep an eye on the watch for that. So are we ready? Let's get to work. Okay, the warm-up is done. I've spiked the heart rate a few times, so there's going to be no feeling of drowning on the first one or two reps. So now we start the test. Okay, so remember, the first two minutes, round about 90% of your perceived maximum. And then the final minute, you're going to push, push, push. Okay, so here we go. Rep number one. One hundred and eighty.
100 and 82 number three One, eight, three. One hundred and eighty six. Right. Last time. Uh, 182 not so much finish <laughs> okay so there we are maximum heart rate achieved was 100 and 186 bpm now that's important because if we took my age 42 i know it's hard to believe but it's true if we did the traditional 220 minus 42 my maximum would be 178 so there's a discrepancy there of 8 bpm and that's important for what we're going to use once we get home so let's have a shower and we'll talk about what we do with this data see you soon i won't be rushing back to do that anytime soon so now we've got that all important maximum heart rate number what do we do with it the traditional heart rate training model which you can see on the screen now is based entirely on your maximum heart rate using one of the many available online training zone calculators you can see the results from my test would give me the training zones you can see on the screen now You can see that using this method, my zone 2 would top out at 130 BPM and by 149 I would already be in zone 4. Now I know from experience and from previous lab tests that these figures are too low. Thankfully there's another method we can use at home and it's called heart rate reserve. To calculate your heart rate reserve you're going to subtract your resting heart rate from your maximum heart rate. So in my case 186 minus 44 gives me a heart rate reserve of 142. Once we have this number we can calculate our training zones. So for example if we want zone 2 which is 60 to 70 percent of our maximum intensity we would first multiply 142 by 60 percent and then add rest and heart rate. So that would give me 129 BPM would be the lower zone of my zone 2. For the upper limit of that zone 2 we're going to use the same formula so heart rate reserve multiplied by 70% this time and then add your rest and heart rate. So for me that's going to be 143. So lower end of zone 2 129 higher end 143 
And if you compare that to the traditional method we already looked at, that's quite a big discrepancy. It was 130 BPM in the first method, and this method is 143, which is much more closely linked to lab tests I've done in the past. You can use the same formula to work out your other training zones. So for example, your tempo would be done between 85 and 90% of your maximum intensity. So use the same formula, heart rate reserve, multiplied by 85%, plus your rest and heart rate. And that will give you the lower end and then use 90% for the higher end. So that would be your tempo work. And for your shorter, faster efforts, anything above that 90%. So there you have it. Now you have your training zones for your very own 80-20 experiment. 80% done in zone two, 20% in those higher zones. Next week, we'll be taking a much closer look at tempo runs. So make sure you tune in for that. Um, as always, like the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, then please do that. Follow along in the social media channels and I'll see you next week.